This video is sponsored in part by Curiosity Stream, Alaska and Hawaii, or the last frontier and the Aloha State, the two states that don't border another state, and these United States, both the last two states to join the Union, both have a really high cost of living. This is because not only are the two desirable states to live in, but they are so isolated, so far from most other places where most things are produced. The high cost of shipping causes everything in both states to be much more expensive. That said, Alaska has a lower cost of living compared to Hawaii. Perhaps because of the high cost of living, both states are slowly losing residents. Both are dominated by their largest cities, Anchorage in Alaska and Honolulu in Hawaii. Around half of all Alaskan residents live in the Anchorage metropolitan area, and more than two-thirds of all of Hawaii's residents live in the Honolulu metropolitan area. Both have dramatically diverse and beautiful beautiful natural scenery, and both have dramatically diverse rainfall patterns. It's kind of crazy, actually. Okay, so in southeast Alaska and the coastal mountain ranges there, they can often get more than 200 inches of precipitation a year, while just south of the Alaska range, they get about 60 inches a year, 12 inches a year in the interior, and less than 6 inches a year in the north slope. In Hawaii, it's just as crazy. Around the summit of Mauna Kea, it it gets about 8 inches a year, but down near Big Bog on the windward slope of Haleakala, Maui, they can get up to 404 inches a year. Whoa-ness. Both have lots of islands. Well, Hawaii is just islands. There are eight main islands, but 137 in total. Alaska has 2,670 islands total. Here they all are. Did you read that? Wow, you're good. The most well-known of these are the Aleutian Islands, which shoot out into the northern Pacific Ocean, way past the 180th meridian. Some of those islands should technically be part of tomorrow, you know, since they are west of the international date line. The one furthest out that is part of Alaska, Atu, is the largest uninhabited island in the country and 1,500 miles from Anchorage. It's about 15 times the size of Manhattan Island, but no one lives there because the weather sucks so bad. Most fun fact ever, a two is both the United States' westernmost and easternmost point. Anyway, the Aleutian Islands form the northernmost part of the Ring of Fire, an area where lots of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions tend to occur. And yep, there are 57 volcanoes on those islands. 2,433 miles or 3,916 kilometers separate them from Hawaii. And yep, both Hawaii and Alaska have to worry about volcanoes. Heck, Hawaii only exists because of volcanoes. Lava rising from the ocean floor over millions of years created them. The Big Island, which is only 300,000 years old, is still getting bigger due to the Kilauea volcano continuously erupting. Both also have to worry about earthquakes, although Alaska more so. The most powerful earthquake in North North American history happened in Alaska. The Good Friday earthquake, which happened on March 27, 1964, lasted 4 minutes and 38 seconds and destroyed towns across South Central Alaska, ultimately killing 131 people. Look at that picture. Yeah. That happened in Anchorage. It caused the land to literally rise several meters in many areas and caused tsunamis that reached as far away as, uh, you guessed it, Hawaii. Residents of both speak a lot of different languages. Hawaii has two official languages, English and Hawaiian, although many there also speak Hawaiian pidgin, an English-based Creole language. But that's about all the two states have in common. Before I get into the differences, did you know there's a wonderful place on the internet where there is nothing but fascinating educational content? That'd be CuriosityStream. It's smart TV for your smart TV. Ha ha ha!
I still think that's funny. Anyway, Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and nonfiction, award-winning exclusive TV shows on topics like history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. With more than 35 collections of curated programs handpicked by their experts. Stream to any device, anytime. I recommend the series American Icons to start off with. Try it out by visiting the link on the screen and in the description of this video. Use code Mr. Beat to sign up and get it for just $14.99 for the whole year. Thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. <sighs> Okay, let's do this. Here are all the big differences between the two. Alaska is bigger, 89, 89 times, times bigger. bigger. Alaska is by far the biggest state in the country, and I think most folks really don't realize just how big it is. You could fit almost four Californias into Alaska, and it's more than twice as big as Texas. While Alaska borders Canada, Hawaii is the only US state not actually connected to North America. It's part of a bigger region region of more than 1,000 islands known as Polynesia. Hawaii is the only island state and only state in the tropics. Hawaii has more people. And one more electoral vote. The population density is of course much higher in Hawaii. Alaska is easily the most sparsely populated state in the country. Both states are in different time zones. Well, a portion of the Aleutian Islands share the same time zone as Hawaii. While both do have a big variety of climate zones, the climate of both states overall is very different. Alaska has a reputation as this very cold place all the time, but parts of it get quite warm during the summer. In the far north, yes, it's cold all year long. That's the tundra where the polar bears chill out. Most of the state has a continental climate and subarctic climate. In these areas, of course, it gets ridiculously cold during the winter, but summers are usually nice. Oh, but they have that permafrost to worry about. Fairbanks, Alaska is a great example to demonstrate the wide range of temperatures. The lowest recorded temperature there is negative 65.9 degrees Fahrenheit, but the highest recorded temperature there is 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't get me wrong, it gets pretty freaking cold in Alaska, but folks also forget that the temperature is moderated along the coast, especially down by Juneau in southeast Alaska, where it rarely gets that cold in the winter compared to, I don't know, Minnesota. Also, being at such a high latitude, the summer days are long in Alaska, but the fall and winter days are short. Hawaii is known as a tropical paradise with generally perfect weather, but did you know that it has 10 different climate zones? It has a tundra climate, too. Say what? Oh, you know it. Well at its really high elevations. But yeah, Hawaii also has subpolar oceanic, humid subtropical, cold summer Mediterranean, warm summer Mediterranean, hot semi-arid, savanna, monsoon, and rainforest. Whew. But yeah, the local wind patterns are all crazy due to the varied landforms on the islands. The vast majority of Alaska is wilderness. Almost 96% of Alaskan land is public. Just 19% of Hawaii is public land. Alaska is only 51 miles or 82 kilometers from Russia at the most narrow point of the Bering Strait. Yep, just that narrow strip of water separates the United States and Russia, believe it or not. Oh, it used to be connected several thousand years ago when the earth was covered with much, much more ice. It was the Bering Land Bridge, and it's likely that the earliest humans who migrated to the Americas crossed it. Hey, let's go through some history, shall we? Hawaii's earliest settlers were Polynesian voyagers, arriving there more than 1,000 years before European explorers ever got there. And thousands of years before that, indigenous peoples lived all over what is now Alaska. Europeans first came across the area in the 1700s, maybe even before that. It was those Russians. One famous Russian expedition was led by a Danish dude named Vitus Bering. Oh, hey, Bering. Yep, the Bering Strait was named after him. After his expedition, Russian hunters were regularly making trips to Alaska to make some money, and many stayed out there. In 1784, Grigory Shelikov established the first permanent Russian colony in Alaska on Kodiak Island. Meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, in 1778, the British explorer James Cook was the first European to reach Hawaii, although the Spanish possibly stopped by 200 years before and didn't document it. Anyway, James Cook called them the Sandwich Islands because that was his favorite food. Just kidding. He named them to honor his sponsor, John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. The English recorded the native name for the islands as Hawaii. Cook visited Hawaii twice and afterward published several books about his voyages which attracted further European visitors, mostly folks who wanted to make money of course. For the rest of the 1700s, Spain sent expeditions to Alaska to try to stake claims all over the Pacific Northwest. However, the Russian-American company was more successful at colonizing Alaska in the first part of the 1800s. The Russians were probably less harsh to the natives than most European groups, but sadly many indigenous peoples died from diseases the Russians brought over due to not being immune to them. Many indigenous peoples also sadly died from diseases they weren't immune to from Europeans who came to Hawaii. In 1795, the warrior chief Kamehameha the Great, who led the independent island of Hawaii, conquered the other independent islands of Oahu, Maui, Molokai, and Lanai, and unified them under one government, beginning the kingdom of Hawaii. In 1820, American Protestant missionaries began arriving, trying to all westernize the islands and stuff. Five years later, King Kamehameha the Third took over and ended up being the longest reigning monarch in the kingdom's history, eventually helping it transfer from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy. By 1840, Britain, France, and the United States were all regularly interacting with the Kingdom of Hawaii, trying to influence it. To fight off the influence of Britain and France, King Kamehameha III signed a treaty with the United States that placed Hawaii under its protection. More and more Americans came out there to set up plantations to grow sugar. Many immigrants from Japan, China, and the Philippines also eventually came to work at those plantations. In 1867, Russia sold Alaska to the United States for $7.2 million. Just happy to get rid of it. I have a whole video about that here. Maybe check it out and stuff? Most people made fun of the American who made the deal, William Seward, saying, what good is that icebox? In the following decades, the United States didn't do much with Alaska, but at least they owned it. In 1887, the Kingdom of Hawaii granted the United States permission to build a naval base at Pearl Harbor. And then private businessmen overthrew Queen Leokalani after years of reducing the monarchy's power and straight up ended the Kingdom of Hawaii, establishing Hawaii as a republic in 1893. A few years later, the United States annexed Hawaii and it became a U.S. territory in 1900. By that time, gold had been discovered in Alaska, which brought thousands of settlers up there trying to strike it rich. Because of this, Alaska became a U.S. territory in 1912. During the first half of the 1900s, more and more Americans began moving to both Alaska and Hawaii. During World War II, Hawaii's importance as a military outpost became critical when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. That attack led to the United States declaring war on Japan and thus entering the entire war. War. The next year, Japan occupied two of the outer Aleutian Islands of Alaska, Kiska, and the aforementioned Attu, where a brutal two-week-long battle took place in which hardly any Japanese surrendered. Because of World War II, the United States built several military bases in Alaska, which further helped the territory grow. By the 1950s, both had enough people to become states, and both became states in 1959, although Alaska joined the Union first. Also in the 1950s, the plantation owners finally lost power as the descendants of immigrant laborers who were now U.S. citizens voted against them. This dramatically changed Hawaiian politics afterward. In 1968, the discovery of oil at Prudhoe Bay and then later the completion of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline in 1977 led to an oil boom in Alaska. Today, mostly because of that oil, Alaska residents pay way less taxes than Hawaii overall. In fact, Alaskans pay less taxes than residents of all other states. They even get money back from the government. Yep. 
funded by the state's oil revenue, every year citizens get a payout via the Alaska Permanent Fund. It has paid out an average of around $1,600 each year to every resident since it began in the 1970s. Also, Alaska doesn't have an income tax. Hawaii does, as well as a much higher sales tax. Still, the median household income is higher in Hawaii. Also, the poverty rate is lower there. However, the minimum wage is currently slightly higher in Alaska. The median age is higher in Hawaii. More Hawaii residents have college degrees. Hawaii is more ethnically diverse. The largest ethnic group there is Asian American, which makes up about 37% of its population. The second largest ethnic group is European American, followed by Hispanic and Native Hawaiian. Alaska's largest minority ethnic group is Native Alaskans. One in five Alaska residents identify as either American Indian or Alaska Native. This is the highest percentage of any state. Politically speaking, Alaska is generally more conservative or more accurately, more libertarian. Hawaii residents generally tend to be pretty loyal to the Democratic Party. They haven't elected a Republican for president since Ronald Reagan in 1984. Meanwhile, Alaska residents have only voted for a Democrat for president once for Lyndon Johnson way back in 1964. Alaska has had a couple of independent governors since it became a state. Major industries in Hawaii include tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, and healthcare. Major industries in Alaska also include tourism, but additionally, petroleum, fishing, and mining. Alaska is experiencing higher job growth, and Hawaii's economy was hit harder by the current COVID-19 pandemic. Alaska has more national parks. Alaska has way, way, way more wilderness. While both have beaches, believe it or not, Hawaiian beaches are some of the best in the world. Due to the influence of its unique mix of Hawaiian, Southeast Asian, East Asian, and North American cultures, Hawaii's culture is one of the most distinct cultures in the world. I mean, just by a sampling of Hawaiian food, you quickly learn that. Oh, and I just gotta mention spam. Not that kind of spam. Yeah, that kind of spam. Per capita, more Hawaiians eat spam than any other area of the world other than Guam. Originally, American soldiers brought it with them to Hawaii as part of their rations, but it became an important source of protein for Hawaiians after fishing was prohibited during World War II. The main two ways to get to Alaska and around in Alaska are by plane and boat. Only one highway, which is really just a glorified road in some places, makes it all the way up there from the contiguous United States through Canada, the Alaska Highway, which, fun fact, I've been on. There's not even a road that leads to Juneau, Alaska's capital. Surfing, of course, remains a huge part of Hawaiian culture as well. In fact, the ancient Polynesians were the first known humans who surfed. Alaska has Denali, the tallest peak in North America. Oh, and the North Pole is actually there. And there's a post office in Hawaii where you can mail a coconut. I mean, like, without putting it in a box. Just the coconut. Look, there is so much more I could get into, but I grow weary for now, so just know that I shall come back to these two magical places for future videos, because they are indeed two of the most epic states of all of these United States. I want to give a special shout out to Adam Christians for helping me make this video. He helped out with some of the research and made some of the animations. It was amazing to have that kind of help. Thank you, Adam. You rock. Also, a shout out to a couple people who have sent me things in the mail. I have a P.O. box, remember? This Maryland shirt. Thank you, Chris, for that. And then I got a postcard from uh, at Classic Fumble. I don't know your real name, but... Thank you very much. Okay, so I've never been to Hawaii, but I hope to go soon. My brother and I did drive all the way to Alaska back in 2010, and I made a little documentary about it. I'll link that in the description. I couldn't include everything, so what did I miss? Also, which states should I compare next? As always, let me know down below, and thanks for watching.